Most React developers start to search for the library when they realize that they need a slider in their application. But here is a problem. When you pick a library, it is difficult to tune it. Additionally, it might not cover all your needs and you don't understand how all these animations and co-functionality is working inside. This is why by the end of this video I will show you how to easily implement React slider without any dependencies inside React and fully understand how it is working. First of all, we must plan an architecture of our slider. We want to make it reusable, so at least it should be possible to change images. This is why, as you can see here, I have inside my app component an image slider where we are providing slides. What is slides? This is simply an array of objects and every single object is basically an image with URL and the title. Inside our image slider is completely empty, but we can destructure here slides because we know we will provide them inside. Another important point is that our slider must have a fixed width and height for the specific case. But it should be configurable because in other case you can't reuse it in a different place. This is why we don't want to write the fixed width of the slider here inside the image slider, we want to get it from the outside. So inside the image slider we want to provide something like parent width and let's say it will be 500. With this approach our slider will be configurable. Now before that I want to apply some styles on our parent component. So let's write here some container styles and we first of all need our width. Let's do it 500 pixels like we provided a value. Then we need some height 280 pixels and margin 0 auto. Now on our div let's add a style property container styles. And you might think, okay, why are we not writing CSS in a separate file? You can totally do that, it doesn't make any difference. So now we've finished with our parent, let's implement an image slider. First of all, let's write some markup. So what do we want? First of all, it will be a div container with styles of our slider itself. Then let's keep it simple at the beginning and just render images. So I want here an additional container for our images and one more container. And you will see why we need so many containers in a second. Now inside here we can render our images by mapping through our slides. So here we are getting a slide and a slide index and each slide will also be a div. Because we will add an image not like an image but as a background image on the div. As we are using map here we must provide the key which will be a slide index because all our slides are unique. And as we want to tune background image, we must provide it in our styles. So we can write it like this. We want here some function like get slide styles with background. And we're providing inside our slide index. Because basically if we create our styles inside image slider, we have full access to all slides and we can read needed slide. So let's create here on the top our get slide styles with background and we know that we are getting a slide index as a parameter. And this function must return for us an object where we can provide a background image. And this is actually a string of URL and here we can provide a variable. It will be slides slide index to read this specific slide dot URL. Let's check if it is working. We need to inspect our element, this is fine that we don't see anything, but here is our div which is parent, and inside our divs we need to render 5 divs, here we have them, and the images are correctly placed. This is exactly what we wanted to achieve, now we simply need to style this div. So before our image slider I want to create some styling, like for example slide styles, and it will be an object. The idea is that now here we can provide this slide styles inside and spread them. So our slide will get slide styles plus background image. As we want to make it flexible we should not provide fixed width and height. So we want here width 100% and we want height 100%. We also want a border radius 10 pixels and background size. And our background size will be cover and we want a background position. It will be center. 
But as you can see, our slide styles doesn't have weights. How will it work? We are getting here inside our image slider, not just slides. As you can see here, we are also providing parent widths. So we can use this value. And right here that we are getting widths, which will be a variable, parent widths and pixels. In this case, we will use this variable and not some styles. Our styles are fluid. As you can see now in browser, all these styles are applied and we're getting height 100% and width is 500 pixels. This is a value from the parent. But we still don't see all these images because we didn't style our parent blocks. So first of all here, let's start with style for our slider. So let's create slider styles. So here we need an object, slider styles, and we need just two things. First of all, position must be relative, and our height must be 100%. Now, additionally to that, I think we have one div too much. We don't need such a deep nesting, so I will remove this div, and we just need to style this div. So let's name it maybe slides container, and let's create here on the top an object just with height 100%. In this case, our images should be rendered. But as you can see in browser, it does not work. And here we see div styles, object, object. It happens because it should be not styles, but style. And now when I reload the page, you can see the images. We see all images at once. And by the way, if you know where I shoot these images, tell me in the comments below. But at least our basic slider is working and we rendered all images. What we want to do additionally, we need an overflow hidden, so we see just a single image, not all of them. This is why on our slides we can add overflow hidden. As you can see now in browser, only first image is visible and all other images are hidden. Now let's add some arrows to control our slider. This is why here before our slides I want to have one more container. And here we want two divs, go to previous and go to next. So here I will put a back symbol and a front symbol. Now let's style them. So I want here style left arrow styles. And we also need here right arrow styles. Now here on the top let's create them. First of all we want it to be position absolute. Because it must be on top of the image. It must be centered. This is why top 50%. Left will be 32 pixels. We want to use transform with translate 0 and minus 50%. So we're moving a half of our arrow. Then font size will be 45 pixels. We want white color. Z index must be 1 because it should be on top of the image. And our cursor must be pointer. Now we want almost the same for our right arrow. And we might reuse somehow the styling. I don't see any reason to do that. We can just copy paste this object. And the only difference here will be that right side will be 32 pixels and all other stuff is staying the same. As you can see in browser now we are getting these two nice arrows. Go to previous, go to next. And we just need to bind an event to it. And this is exactly why we are building all business logic without libraries in my middle to senior frontend bootcamp because it will teach you how to do it on your own and control it fully. But in order to implement previous and next, we need to know what image we see right now. This is why I want to store the index of our current image. So we can create here current index and we need also a setter, so set current index. And we're using here a use state hook and initial value is zero. Now we need two functions. First of all, go to previous and also go to next. But here is a twist. When we're clicking go to previous and we're on the first image, we want to jump to the last image. And when we're on the last image and we're hitting next, we want to jump to the first image. So let's cover this logic also. We need to know if this is a first slide. So is first slide. It means that current index equals zero. And now we need to calculate our new index. And we're checking if it is our first slide, so we're going to previous, it must be our last index. So it will be slides length minus one. In other case, it will be just current index minus one. 
and after we calculate our new index we can just set it so set current index new index but what about go to next we are doing exactly the same but we need to know if it is the last slide so is last slide we are checking that our current index equals our slide's length minus 1, so it is the last slide. Now we are calculating our new index. In this case we are checking if it is the last slide, we want our index to be 0. In other case it will be current index plus 1. And we should not forget to change our current index to the new index that we provide. So we created these two functions, but we did not use them. So let's add here a non-click event. On our previous, it will be go to previous. And we also need a non-click event, go to next. Let's check our logic. I'm clicking on the arrow. But as you can see in browser, this arrow doesn't react at all. Is our code wrong? Not really, but just to remind you, we simply rendered all slides, we never used our current image. So basically what we need to do, we need somehow to translate the position of the image, so we see exactly the image that we need to see. And also all our images should be not vertically, but horizontally, in this case we will see that animation later. So inside our slides container, I want to create one more div and wrap our slides with it. And here we need a style which we need to calculate. So it will be get slides container styles with width. And now here inside our component, I want to create this function and it must return for us styles which are dynamic. But as we are using here styles with width, I propose to change the name of this slides container and name it slides container overflow styles. In this case, it will be clear what it is about. So let's rename this element, it was here. And now we're talking about slides container with width. And we also need some basic styling here. So let's create here slides container styles. And first of all, I want here a display flex. So they are not in the column, but in line. We also need here height 100% and we should not forget to use flex as a string. And now we can use this slides container styles inside our function get slides container styles with width. So here we want to get our slides container styles and additionally a width and a translate. First of all, what is width? In our case, it will be our parent width, which we are multiplying on slides length. Just to remind you, we have one huge long container and we need to set a correct width. Additionally to that, we want to move this container to show exact image. So here we want to use transform and it will be translate x. And here we have minus, then current index, multiply on parent width. And don't forget here pixels. Let's look in browser and before we check if it's working, let's understand how it is working. So here is our div and as you can see the width is 2500 pixels. So this container is enormously huge. It is like all our image in the row. And now we have this transform translate and we will update this value like this. So we are just changing this value and as you can see the image moves and we want it to go to the minus, and we see then the next image and the next image. So this is our idea. Now what is happening? I click on the arrow, and as you can see, the image changes. Realistically, it is not changing. We see all images at once, but with overflow hidden, we see just a current image, and what we are doing when we are clicking, we simply on the container translate the position, and we see another image. And with that, our basic slider with arrows is working. Most importantly, when I'm clicking previous, it is jumping to the last slide and with next to the first slide. But really often on our slider, we want to have dots here on the bottom with the amount of slides so we can jump to the specific slide. We can easily do that by adding one more container after our images. So let's create here a div and inside we want to render a dot for every single slide. So it will be slides map. We are getting access to the slide and slide index again. And we will render a div with the dot inside. 
Here we should not forget to add a key, it will be our slide index. And we also want to style it, so let's create here a style which will be dot styles. So let's come here on the top and create just a new object dot styles. And we want here slight margin, it will be 0 and 3 pixels. Then cursor pointer and bigger font size, so let's make it 20 pixels. As you can see in browser, all our dots are there, but they are not positioned correctly. Because we also need to style our parent. So let's create here a container, dots container, styles, and let's tune it also here on the top. We just need here our display flags and justify content center. Let's check in browser. As you can see now our dots are positioned correctly in the middle of our slider. But we still need to implement an event to go to the specific image. For this we can create an additional function and let's name it go to slide. And inside we need just a slide index to change it correctly. And what we want to do is just call set current index and provide a slide index inside. Now we can use this go to slide function for our dot. So let's add here a click event. And it will be go to slide, but as we need to provide a slide index inside, we need to call it like this. So our click event is there, let's check it. I'm clicking on the dot and we're jumping on specific slide. This is all great, but we don't have an animation. And with our implementation we can add it with a single liner. So we just need to scroll to the top and find our slides container styles with display flex and height. Here we just need to add transition, transform, is out, 0.3 seconds. And with this single line we should get a nice animation. Let's check in browser, I am clicking on the next. And now we are getting this nice smooth animation when our transform is applied. And the last feature that we are still missing inside our slider is a timer. Because we really want our slider to change images on its own. And we can do that just by set timeout. So our first step here would be to implement a timer reference. We are using useRef hook for that. And the initial value is null. Now before our return we can create a use effect. And this use effect must be called only once. And what we want to do inside our timer ref dot current, we want to set an ID of our set timeout. So here I'm calling set timeout. And inside we have a function and let's say it will be called after two seconds. And here what we want to call is go to next. But this is not enough because we never clean it. So first of all before we want to check when we are going inside use effect. And if we already have a timer we need to delete it. So we are checking do we have timer ref current. And if yes then we are calling clear timeout. And inside we are providing an ID, it's timerref.current. And additionally to that, when we are destroying the component, we also want to clear the timeout. This is why we need here a return function. And we also are calling here clear timeout. And we are providing inside timerreference.current. But as you can see here, we are getting a warning that we are using go to next, and it must be a dependency. So let's provide go to next inside our array. So what is happening here? Our use effect is being called after the first render. And it creates the set timeout and calls go to next in two seconds. Go to next changes the state, which means the component is being re-rendered. If it is re-rendered, this set timeout is applied again and again after every render. Let's reload the page in browser, wait two seconds, and as you can see, it automatically changes the image. We can obviously still control with arrows our slider, but when we are not controlling it, it starts to do it automatically. Now you know that you don't need a library for something that you can control yourself. But if you still feel that you are not a senior developer and you want to improve your skills, I prepared for you a free PDF and a checklist of things that a senior developer must know. So check it out in the description under this video.